in that company. We're very pleased to say, honoured to say, we're joined in the studio now by uh, legendary manager Brian Clough. Brian, thanks very much for coming in. Paul, thank you for asking me. Lovely <laughs> to see you. Uh, I think you better ask me when we've finished. <laughs> <laughs> because we... uh, I might make a right you-know-what of it, and yeah, you'll be too pleased. No, 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 we haven't had much experience of this type <laughs> of work. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Now, um, 4.37, Hawksby and Jacobs, with you through until 7 here on TalkSport. Brian Clough is with us in the studio. We're talking about his book, Cluffy, Walking on Water, My Life, which was published this week by Headline. Uh, but let's, let's link him up with an old pal. Uh, used to pop in sometimes for steak and chips. He's been telling some stories about you, Jeff, in the break. It's Jeff Boycott of Headingley. You're through to Brian. Hello, lads. Hi, hey, Paul. How are you? Um, pretty good. How are you? Well, you sound good. I'm fine. I'm in bad nick than when you last saw me. Yes, I To be fair, that's due to the fact I haven't seen you and I've got better. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw, you, I saw you on telly with Raymond and Closey. Was nice. And... Uh, you still look dapper and smart, and uh, I can never understand why you put that bat down, you know, because we could still do what you know, as you well know. <laughs> you taught us all lessons throughout our uh, sporting life, because you were our idol and our uh, pinnacle of uh, being the pro that we all wanted to be. And uh, as you know, my first love was cricket, Yes. and we wanted to emulate you being a footballer i couldn't play cricket but i wasn't bad and it was a good catch you thought it was a no ball didn't you <laughs> <laughs> you got me out cotton ball that's all I, that matters dead right <laughs> i was bloody laughing all the way and um, the I first know. time i've ever seen you back actually <laughs> was when you walked past me and i saw you walk in that bloody pav uh, pavilion the long walk the lords isn't it when you get somebody out <laughs> Yes, it is, but I, I didn't mind a bowler seeing the back of me as long as I've been there a long time. <laughs> true, true. Well, <laughs> Brad, you're sounding good, Nick. I am, actually, yes. I love the cricket still. I enjoy it immensely. And uh, like everything, your managing career, your football career came to an end, my cricket career did, and whatever else we do and enjoy, nothing's as good as when we played. Well, dead, nothing at all. Dead right. How's it going, Jeffrey, this afternoon? Still not going particularly well for England, by the way. No, they couldn't ball my mum out. <laughs> They've got a pitch here that's doing a bit, and the 427 for three are in here, and we yes. ball shocking. The coach has said so. Every ex-player I mean, from Michael Holden, Ian Bolton, they all say so. We've had an opportunity to ball people out, and we ball very poorly. And uh, I think as a sportsman, uh, you accept the good days, but when you perform poorly, you've got to accept the bad. And we, we really haven't performed very well. And good luck to India. They battered well on a difficult pitch, and they've made the most of it. OK, Jeffrey, we'll go back to you later Listen, on. can I ask Brian a question? Of course you can. Don't rush off. No, Brian, I can do. Listen, yep. I know what you did for Nottingham Forest was fantastic, unbelievable. Two European Cups for a modest club like that, when, look, the club I've supported 40-odd years, Man United, is now financially the biggest club in the world. It's only won two European Cups, and you won two in three years. Tell me, what can we do to make Manchester United better? Because the defence is appalling. Well, that's obviously the thing that's let them down, and that's why they've not. I'm not sure if they're getting a wee bit greedy, and I don't mean greedy on the pitch, I mean greedy off it as well. We hear such contrasting stories uh, about um, Alex complaining about players getting a lot of money and testimonies and that, and of course you read in one year Alex gets a testimony himself, signs a new contract when he's already said he's going to finish, retire, and he changes his mind too many times. And it's like being a player on the field. Once you change your mind, Jeffrey, you taught me, one ball and you change your mind, you're out. Absolutely. Well, I've written to, I've written to your player, Martin O'Neill, already. All good. I've told him to wait, don't do anything silly <laughs> and sign for anybody else. Because his future is Man United, he's destined for it. I think he's the best man for it, I've thought so, for three years. What well, do you think? He's getting a good grounding now, uh, and people forget that he managed on league clubs before he went to the top. He got to Leicester, obviously, but he, he was at Wickham for a period of time, and he did what I have advocated for many, many years. In fact, I don't think you can do money without it. He did his apprenticeship, Geoffrey. Yeah, well, I just think that 
I've supported the club for 40-odd years, ever since I went to watch Dennis Law when he arrived, and I fell in love with him and Bobby Charlton. Never mind, Georgie came afterwards, but those two. And I followed the club, and even when they got relegated and everything. And the thing to me is, it seems there's a bit of complacency about the club, and it needs a fresh outlook. Somebody to walk in there like Martin and say, hey, you, you were new, you're going and it make a few people pull the socks up because they're earning more money than any other club the players get huge money and i think they've won so much that there's a bit of complacency got into them hey it'll yeah, be, it'll it'll be interesting when alex does finally say well i'm getting out of it because inevitably we've all got to face this uh, terrible thing where you've got to go home one night and say to whoever you're with and if you're with, if you're on your own you say to yourself i've had a good run i'm now finished i'm now going into a different part of my life and i think i'm not giving alex Morgan advice and i'm not saying anything detrimental about him but it won't happen till he says i'm now going to sit on the sidelines at manchester united get out of that office he occupies and uh, there's no to do with it. Uh, Bill Shangley went through a stage, Jeffrey, where when he retired at Anfield, uh, he used to go down and watch them train on the morning. And he was a wee bit embarrassing for everybody because there he was, a giant in his, in his own right. He built Liverpool to what they were. And the people who took over didn't want him hanging around because in effect, They've got two gaffers. Bill was still regarded as a gaffer, and the gaffer in charge was the gaffer. Well, I don't think Man United will win anything this year, and I'm a supporter, a big supporter, because it's a bit like batting. If you can't defend, you can't stay in and make runs, and we can't defend. Jeffrey, uh, thanks lovely. a lot. Thanks very much. We'll, we'll, we'll speak to you a bit later on. There's Jeffrey Boycott there. Could have just let two of them oh, yeah, really. I was enjoying that. Yeah. Brian Clough's in the studio with us. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk a bit of England. We've had an email about that. And some, some prize, something I didn't know that I read in the book, that Brian uh, was up for one of the uh, big European jobs. One of our Andy Davis from Harvard's oh, right. emailed us. So we'll find out more about that. <laughs>